got a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 laying around, let's install Ubuntu 2004 on it and use it to drive a robot. Hi, my name's Sid Faber from the robotics team at Canonical. In this video, I want to walk you through installing Ubuntu 2004 on a Raspberry Pi so that we can use it to install ROS. All you need to get started is a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4. Can't use a Raspberry Pi 2 or earlier or a Raspberry Pi 0. That's uh, a little bit more challenging and not covered here. We're also going to be using an SD card, 4 or 8 gig will work. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing this uh, on a Raspberry Pi 4 with a 64 gig card. Uh, and I'm going to be running it from my 1804 Ubuntu desktop, although any desktop will work. All right, let's get started. Each ROS release targets an Ubuntu LTS release. If we take a look at index.ros.org, installation instructions show which Ubuntu release you should use. Since we're targeting ROS Foxy, we're going to install Ubuntu 2004. To find the Ubuntu image to download, we'll start at ubuntu.com, then select IoT Downloads. Here's the 2004 64-bit release. We want to choose 64-bit, not 32-bit. For other images, if you have different needs, check out cdimage.ubuntu.com slash releases. If you're selecting an image from here, I'd highly recommend uh, choosing an ARM64 image, not an ARM HF image. Also, you want to select a server image, not a desktop image. Everything that we're going to do with our robots is going to be done through SSH, so there's no need to have the heavy desktop components. To write the image to the SD card, the first thing I need to do, of course, is to insert the card into my computer. We downloaded an image into the Downloads folder. On the Ubuntu workstation, I find it's easiest to simply right-click on the image and select Open with Disk Image Writer. We'll select the SD card as the destination, click on Start Restoring, double check to make sure we're writing to the right device, and click Restore. This requires admin access, so we'll grant that, and now the image is writing to disk. If you happen to be on a different operating system or a different type of workstation, just take a look at the tutorials on Ubuntu.com. Uh, there's plenty of instructions on how to write the image to disk from different operating systems. We're going to configure this for first boot. This is an optional step, but I'd rather not connect the keyboard and a mouse to the Pi just to set up our networking, so let's configure that now. We're going to mount the system boot partition on the SD card, and then simply clicking the play icon here. Now that we're in the mounted partition, find the network config file. This is the one that sets up the network configuration for your first boot. We'll leave the Ethernet selection as it is and just scroll down to the Wi-Fi section. Here we'll add in my access point. Mine's called RobotNet and my super secret Wi-Fi password. You could leave this as a dynamic DHCP address, but I prefer to configure a static IP address so I know where the device is the first time it connects. So we'll save the file, and now that everything's configured, we can go ahead and eject the card. Now we're ready to power up the Pi for the first time using this image. We'll insert the card into the Pi, connect power, and watch for some activity on the activity lights. Now we'll ping the device to see if it comes online. You might have to wait up to five minutes for configuration to complete. Uh, this is all the initializing of keys and files and so on. However, if you're on Wi-Fi and it hasn't responded after about five minutes, go ahead and restart by unplugging the device and plugging it back in. There's actually a minor issue with connecting to Wi-Fi the first time around. If you're more interested in what's going on, take a look at the notes in this video. Okay, our Pi is now online, so let's SSH in. We're going to use the default account of Ubuntu, uh, which the default password is Ubuntu as well. 
On first login, we're required to change the account password. We'll type in a new password, type it in a second time, and then as expected, we're logged out. Simply log back in and use the new password. There you go, as you can see, we're up and running with Ubuntu 2004. One final note, it's best to halt the Raspberry Pi to shut it down before you turn off the power. This helps prevent against uh, corrupting any open files on the SD card. So there you have it. Now we have a Raspberry Pi running Ubuntu 2004 server. All we had to do was pull down the image, write it to an SD card, do a little bit of configuration to get it on the network. All told, maybe about 10 to 15 minutes worth of effort to get everything written and set up. For more information, see the tutorials on Ubuntu.com. Again, my name is Sid Faber from the robotics team at Kanako. Thanks a lot for watching.